Hello. Today I'll be talking about FinanceWorks. FinanceWorks is an online financial management application developed by Digital Insight. It's usually given to account holders at credit unions and banks for free to help with their budgeting. And I often hear people talking about third-party apps like Mint or EveryDollar, and it kind of surprises me when I find out they actually have FinanceWorks already and they don't use it. Um, FinanceWorks is a great utility, and I think the general lack of use has a lot to do with banks not publishing good documentation and tutorials for the product. Today I'm going to be talking about the general use and best practices that I've picked up since using it and try to impart how you can better utilize the software. If your bank provides FinanceWorks, I'm hoping this video will give you a good head start in getting your accounts in order. Here's the landing screen for FinanceWorks. Think of this as a digital monitoring board. On the left are all accounts I've added. This is a big feature because you can add accounts outside of the checking or savings account that you're currently subscribed to. Um, you can add credit cards, 529s, uh, brokerage accounts, annuities, or even mortgages. This allows you to get a portfolio level snapshot of how you're doing. On the right we've added an interactive pie chart of our spending broken down by categories and yes you can not control the categories. Also is an itemized list of the budget goals that you can start to monitor. At the bottom of the screen you can see reminders for bills due and set alerts for large expenses. Again, you have control over what you monitor and the tolerance levels for the alerts. On the lower right of the screen you have a net worth calculator. If you monitor all of your accounts through FinanceWorks, this is a great tool for seeing your overall financial health. I mentioned before that the pie chart is interactive. You can hover over each piece with your mouse to see the category that the expenses are in along with the dollar value. If you left click on one of the pieces, the screen will display all the transactions for the category. Here I selected my home repair category. Note the pie chart changes to display all the transactions that match my category. This allows you to clearly see how each transaction contributed to this category over the time frame. If you select each section, you will be taken to the transaction. In this example I was doing home repairs, you can see the individual check numbers I was writing to contractors. Notice that I can see how my spending on this category compares over prior months using the chart on the left. Also notice that you can control your time frame by selecting the quick links on the right. You can view the 1 month, 3 month, 6 month, and your own custom time frames as well. If you wish to navigate out of the pie chart and go back to the original portfolio, simply click the up icon. Let's scroll to the bottom of the screen so we can see the transaction detail now. Here we can see a transaction ledger for all the transactions of our home repair category. On the top is a summary of the category and details pertaining to the average spending. Now at any point, if you see one of the transactions below and say to yourself, you know what, this really belongs in a different category, you can simply navigate to the exact transaction, select the down arrow under the category column, and just change the category. It also gives you the option of being able to type in new category names, so don't feel that you're restricted to just what's being provided. Okay, so I just gave you a very high-level overview of what's going on inside of FinanceWorks. Uh, from here on out, I'm going to give you kind of a virtual tour of what's happening. So this is going to be a very quick go through some of the high-level features, and then we'll kind of dive down on some of the details, and I'll give you some best practices as well. Um, so here I'm back at the dashboard, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down so we can take a look at some of the things that we were looking at earlier. Um, now I'm going to go up to the top and I'll point out some of the other things that I didn't get to talk about. Uh, we have have the transactions so if I click on the transactions here I can get a look at all the transactions that have been happening now mind you because I've been linking these to other accounts not just my checking account I'm looking at all transactions here you can see in the top that I have the capability of being able to control the time frame by which I'm looking at my transactions and when I do that if I look down below after this refreshes for us uh, I'll be able to see all the transactions that happened during this time Time frame. Now I'll be um, blunt about it. When you first start setting this up, um, start simple. In other words, just start with your checking account. Uh, so this way you can start easily by trying to get all these categories filled in. Um, FinanceWorks does a really good job of trying to guesswork what 
transactions that should be fitting in. So if you hit the drop down here under category, you'll see that there is a pre-assorted selection list of categories that were designed for you. And based on the keywords that are used, sometimes it'll actually try to associate this with a category, right? Um, there's going to be other times where it has the wrong category or it has no category and you will have to go in here and set it up. And this is kind of where I'm getting at with it's always best to slowly add the accounts in. Don't throw them in all at the same time. And as you start adding more and more accounts, this process will become more intuitive. Um, the idea here is so that Finance Works becomes intelligent. It will see uh, trends inside of your transactions and it'll automatically be able to categorize. Right now I've been using this for over two years. I do no work to this whatsoever. Occasionally I might be writing a check to somebody and I'll have to go in here and recategorize what that check was used for. But other than that, all the automatic transactions that are happening, whether it's my credit cards, whether it's my banking account, Finance Works is doing it all for me. It's fantastic. Okay, so you can see here that I had the list down, listing of transactions. I could always select the add to add new transactions. Uh, and you can see here as I scroll on down, I have a whole listing of transactions that I could narrow down my categories. And I could also search if I knew the name of either the uh, institution I was sending it to, the payee, or the category. I could just type that in and I could search for individual transactions. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the trends. And what we're doing here is being able to see um, all the trends that have been happening inside of our um, portfolio. Now this is at a portfolio level. So this isn't just inside of the checking account or just inside of your savings account. This is every single account that you've added into Finance Works. As I scroll down, you can see here that it's again giving me the categories that we set up earlier. I can see how I'm averaging across those categories over a specific period of time. And it tells me how I'm doing. Oh, okay, I'm doing pretty good for this time frame. Uh, if I want to adjust my time frame, if I wanted to go you know, three months out, if I click on that, it'll take me to a three month filter, right? And of course, down below, I can go back in and I can look at all of my transactions. All right, so you see this little gray sliver right here? That's uncategorized. That means I have specific transactions where uh, I need to go back and recategorize something uh, because it doesn't fit into a neat category. So if I select that, of course, it's going to list now all of the transactions that were uncategorized. I can go back down here and give it a category. So in this case, I happen to know that these were target transactions. Uh, these are going to go back into my household category. All right, pretty simple. And so now that I, as I've categorized those, they've disappeared from my list and I no longer see them on my pie chart. Another great feature are the goals. So here is your budget items, right? So there's the active spending that you normally do, but you can also go into here and actually set what your goals are for individual categories, right? So um, I ha currently right now say that my goal is to uh, take out about 500 bucks worth of cash, and that cash is usually for uh, my gas because I got a really cheap gas station on my way to work. Uh, so I usually take out some uh, gas for, throughout the month, and then that's what my cash is used for. So for each category, you can set your own individual goals, and if you have to edit it, you can go back in, just simply select the edit, and retype in the, the number. Now, there's one other thing I just I do want to discuss. I'm going to go back to the overview. And this is perhaps the most important part. So we have transactions that are inside of the system that are happening on a regular basis, right? Um, so I want to go in and I'm just going to take a look at groceries for a moment. And as these transactions are happening, uh, the category when we assign the individual transaction to a category, uh, what that actually does is it takes that and puts it into the bucket so it can be displayed inside of our charts, right? So as I scroll on down, you can see everything right here is going to categories, um, into the groceries category. 
So let's think about that for a moment when it comes to something like credit cards. If I go back to the overview, we have several credit cards that are set up on this. Um, there are times in which I do not want my credit cards to be showing on this chart. Why is that? Well, because my credit cards themselves, if I, if I take a look here, my Barclays card, the credit cards themselves have transactions in them, right? So when this goes out to the Barclays server, it's actually downloading all those transactions, and it is already itemizing these into their individual categories, right? So I don't want to show in my portfolio that I am paying to Barclays card because all of my individual transactions are already going to their assigned categories. If you show the payment to Barclays, uh, what you're essentially doing is doubling up on your transactions because you've already paid for groceries that went under the groceries category, for example, or for these dining events that went that when we were out eating. Um, I don't want to show a second payment reflecting these transactions. So what I do in that situation when I'm actually sh uh, doing my payment, uh, the actual payment itself has to go into its own category called transfer out. Right, and so when you when you select transfer out, it does not show inside of your portfolio transactions listing. So it gets categorized as its own thing. It happens silently behind the scenes. Likewise, when I'm receiving money into my um, either into my checking account or I'm transferring money over into my Scott Trade account, which is my uh, active day trading account. I don't want the money being transferred into those accounts to be shown either. So I select transfer in. That's a really, really big deal because what will happen is when you're first setting this up for the very first time, you'll start to notice, hey, wait, you know, why is my spending look so high? And the reason why it looks so high is because you're not concealing the spending transactions or the money that you're doing to pay off the credit card. Now, paying off the credit card is important, but for in terms of um, categorizing those transactions, you want to conceal the credit card payment. Why? Because the transactions for your credit card are already categorized and showing up in the appropriate categories that you've built. So don't show those credit card payments, just simply show the categories. Um, and I, this is just a learning experience. It took me months, months. So just plan on spending some time on this before I actually got um, all of my categories sorted. I hope this helps you. And I think that Finance Works is a wonderful tool. Um, try using it. And like I said, don't just think that you can jump right in there. Uh, best practice is to slowly add your accounts and, and start slow and build it up slowly. And as you go through month by month, as long as you can look at the transactions, they make sense that your budget items are adding up and your categories look like they should be you know, about where they should be at then it'll just kick right in and it'll be almost automatic. Then you can start adding more accounts if you choose to. Once you get the whole portfolio structure set up and you can see all of your accounts across the board, it is so relieving. It's like you don't have to log into separate accounts. You don't have to memorize separate accounts. They're all there. Everything is there. I hope this helped you out.